Good morning, everybody out there in the lab world. Brian Walls here, president and founder of Now Sourcing and host of the Weekly Wisdom live stream. I am joined here today with Monica Jansen of Jansen Communications. How are you doing today, Monica? Very good, very yeah. good. Thanks for having me. Yep, thanks for being here. For those of you who don't, Monica, you're probably just living under a rock or something, but Monica will tell you everything about how awesome she is. She's one of the most kick-ass copywriters, incredible writer, great interviewer, always writes things that are straight to the point, very readable, very shareable. We'll get into that. Before we get all into everything that Monica is about, for those of you who have not been watching Weekly Wisdom, I know there's plenty of you because we're still growing and this is our eighth episode ever. This talks all about entrepreneurship. And you might say, oh, come on, like everybody talks about entrepreneurship, man. And that's true. But everybody likes to talk about entrepreneurship right now because it's in style. It's fancy. It sounds fun to tell your friends, oh, hey, I work my four hour work week and I sip my ties on the beach and all that. But guess what? For every guy who's writing about the four hour work week, there's everybody else that's buying the book that is not working the four hour work week. They're working more than that in a day. So we talk about the hard work. We talk about the not so glorious janitorial duties that need to happen when you're an entrepreneur. Not the glorious things, but the hard work that we've learned through the trenches. So I've been in my business 10 and a half years. Monica has certainly been working at this a while and she'll tell you her experience in a moment. It's very important to think about the hard parts because it's very difficult to be an entrepreneur. You don't always have the support system. There's a lot of psychological price that you have to pay that your friends and family, spouses and loved ones might have to pay because you really have to give it your all or it's gonna die. Just being smart isn't good enough. Just being passionate about it isn't good enough. You have to be smart and good at what you do and you have to work relentlessly hard to really make something like that work. I usually begin all these live streams talking about a particular article on Inc.com, Inc. Magazine, talking about the psychological price of entrepreneurship where the author compares entrepreneurship to riding a lion. So on the outside, it sounds great, right? Oh, wow, look, that person's riding a lion. That's so cool. How'd they do that? Amazing. They really knew how to tame a lion. But if you're the entrepreneur, you're totally like in a fetal position, like, holy crap, I'm on a lion and how am I not gonna die? So speaking of not dying, we're gonna talk about today's topic, which is how to get paid. So I don't care how good you are at what you do, it doesn't matter. Your business is going to die if you can't get paid. Now let's unpack that a little bit because there's a lot of stuff that has to happen from coming up with the idea in your brain, registering a business or whatever, getting the word out there, getting the clients, doing the sales, making the deal and getting paid. So even before you get paid, you have to be a good salesperson or hire somebody or temp somebody to do that. You have to have a solid product. You have to be priced competitively and all that. But why most businesses fail is this whole cash flow problem. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't understand just because people say, sure, I'll work with you. That's not a binding contract. Just because somebody shakes your hand or indicates that they might be interested in email, you basically don't actually have the sale until you have the money. And I don't mean a check that's addressed to the wrong person or for the wrong amount or post dated 10 years into the future. I mean, actually like money in the bank or if they're like a big fortune 500 or something that they actually have a PO generated that you know that this is as good as cash. Mm -hmm. So I don't wanna just run on over our guest here. Certainly Monica is gonna have great stuff to say in here. Tell us Monica, tell us everything that you know on the subject. I just noticed that I got really dark because the sun came out behind me. Um, nice. Getting paid. I want to go back to what you were saying about, you know, you have to be a good salesperson, really, right? Um, to, to to start and, and, and grow a small business. Um, and, and so you think getting paid is just going to be the easy part, right? Because you've gone through that whole beginning the grinding and uh, you know, nose to the grindstone, hustling to get the clients, to get the projects, um, to deliver the project, um, and and then um, and then you're like, all right, eh, we're we're all set. No, you're not all set. Done. <laughs> not until not until you see the transaction come through on PayPal or you know you 
what merchant service, you know, if you have a credit card or the check clears in the bank. Right. Absolutely. Then, then you're done. <laughs> then that then then you've completed the sale. So oh. and and this is what drives me crazy, right? So I wrote a blog post. Um, I don't know if it's on LinkedIn or I think I put it on LinkedIn about about this issue um, on September 2nd because I'd, I'd had enough. I'd had it up to here. And I just reread the blog post right before, um, right before this call. <laughs> I was like on fire writing this thing. I mean, I was like pounding the keyboard because <laughs> I was so angry <laughs> when I wrote about it. Finding Forrester? <laughs> What's that? The movie Finding Forrester with Sean Connery. Yeah. There's a moment in it where he's like, punch the keys. I'll send it later, but. Oh, like, is he like a teacher and he mentors? Yes, yes. So that yeah, was I never you. saw that movie. You, totally just, you were, it doesn't matter. That's the only line you really need to know. The movie kind of sucked. But like you were just punch the keys, just pounding away at it. Yeah. I that post. That's, Do you have a link yeah. to that first? I'll try to find it while we're talking. No worries, no worries. So, um, so here, let me tell you what happened to me and why I ended up writing this blog post, and then we'll we'll talk about how to get paid. So um, I had I can't remember how these people found me, but some big creative agency in Ohio got yeah. in touch with me, had a really 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 cool project that they needed help on, and I'm like, yes, this is going to be awesome. This is going to be fun. Um, it's going to be long term. It's going to be pretty lucrative. Um, and so I got started on it and I invoiced at the end of the month and my invoice just, it wasn't getting paid. You know, we went over, I had net 30 terms, which is pretty common, right? Invoice wasn't getting, I'm like, uh, yo, you're like late on this invoice. You know, it was due like a few days ago. Oh yeah. We, our net terms are 45 to 60 days. And I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like, no, in what I sent you in, you know, the statement of work, whatever, right. You know, net 30. Okay. That's what you, you do. You don't, you don't set the payment terms. I set the payment terms. I'm the one who's delivering. So, and they wouldn't budge. And I'm like, bye. <laughs> and it was hard to do. It was really hard to do that. You could give them the finger all you want, but at the same time, you have a choice in life. You can give them the finger or you can struggle through and get paid. So did you literally walk away after you did the work and just not get paid? I got paid eventually. Good. But I walked away. I said, I'm sorry, this is ridiculous. Okay, meaning but once you got that, you were done with future work. Just Yeah, yeah. I, I walked away from the project and it was really, 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 really hard to do. But someone has to stand up for themselves, right? I'm like, I was raised, I was raised to always stand up for yourself. My maiden name is Patantius. And every like good family friends know you don't mess with the Patantius because they're gonna come and get you. <laughs> so I'm not going to Ohio to get these people, but you I'm sorry. It's ridiculous. But the the worst part, I think, is that this was another creative agency. Creatives tend to get shat on across uh, the board. Okay. Um, like, I'm going to give you up to 100 props right now just for this. People ask for free stuff all the time, you know, and I think like one of the most exploitative, expo one of the biggest exploitation, Exploit what? Exploitative, I think. Is you know. One of the most exploitative um, scams out there is the, what are the, what are the, the sites where you can go in there and be like, uh, I need a logo and people create all these logos and you pick the one that you want and then you pay nothing for it, like a hundred bucks or whatever. So all of these people are doing this, this work for free, you know, working on spec. Um, and that, I mean, that's, that's a problem in the, in the creative community period. You yeah. know, working on spec, maybe I'll pay you, maybe I won't. Mm -mm. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not how it works. This I is our knowledge. Not by name, John, but yeah, all day long. It, you know, I find 99 that. 99 signs, thank you. Yeah. 
I think uh, Jay Z has a song that goes something like that, but I, I won't go. That got ninety nine problem. Forget it. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> let me ask you a question, Monica. So, how long did it take you to get paid with that particular client that you eventually told them to go jump in? Uh, two months, um, but it was two months from when I had submitted my invoice, not two months from when I completed the project, right? Because I send out my invoices at the end of the month. Okay, so it, you wanted to get it paid in 30 days, right? Once you yeah. got you assume like you did it, you started, and then you invoice at the end of the month. So instead of it taking 30 days, because you still have to do the work and not do other sales calls, right? So, I mean, they're taking away your time. So instead yeah. of 30, it ended up really being effectively like 90 days, right? Exactly. That sucks. It sucks. It's stupid. And, and, and then, you know, to... What I was just saying about you know spec work, ninety nine designs, etc. Um, I, I can't believe another creative agency was doing this to a creative. I that should. really got my goat. <laughs> that, I but I I don't like it, but I sure can believe it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I, a friend of mine, um, who is a creative, also said mm -hmm. they have one client, huge client take six months for these people to pay their bills. Oh yeah. There's no, there's no excuse for that. There really is. So, I mean, I, you know, I've been in business long enough. Um, I officially founded my business in 2009. Um, so you've been around a little longer than me, Brian, but, um, you wouldn't know at, like this, exactly. at this point, I don't need to, I don't need a client like that. You know, um, I have, I have the luxury hmm. of telling, you know, giving someone the finger and walking away. Um, and I, like I said, I, it was still hard to do, you know, we had already developed a great relationship, great rapport. Um, it was, you know, we were naming a company. That's what I was working on. That was just the beginning of it. Um, it was fascinating. Anyway, so, so how to get paid has become like a really hot issue for me, especially after that. And that's not the first big pro issue that I've had. Um, right. I had a client who owed me $12,000 for well over a year and finally paid up most of it. Mm, so awesome. I've got another client in collections. They're slowly paying. Ugh. Well, you know. if I could pay you with props. <laughs> <laughs> we have a few folks in the, for sure. We have a few folks in the audience that have made a, a couple points here. So let's, Let's talk about Carolyn's first. So Carolyn says she can tell us a horror story about doing work for a company that said, quote, our handshake is good. And if it's not good enough for you, we don't want to work with you. Carolyn, I know that feel. I know that type. Chances are they're very old school and that really sucks. I hope you didn't do it. And I don't know if you were able to do it, get paid all right or not. No, she was only 18, so she did it. And you know what, Carolyn, when I was starting out, I would have done the same thing. Yeah, and you got to start somewhere, guys. Listen, you know, Monica and I have been at this a while. I'm not calling either of us old, but we've been beaten up a while. Oh, Jeanette? Oh, fun. oh they're right down the street from me. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah, well... We don't like to knock any particular companies and all that. So we're going to try our best to hold back specific names or anything identifiable. And Carolyn, feel free to, no, no, you're fine. We're just broadcasting. <laughs> I'm just saying that I, I really, I don't want to give people the wrong impressions because sometimes, sometimes just weird stuff can happen. So I find that if you deal with a very large company, so we deal with quite a number of Fortune 500s, very large agencies, and if you're going to deal with places that have enormous amounts of people that work there, getting paid is complicated. So if you fill out the wrong form or if you send it through FreshBooks by email instead of a PDF and this and that and the other thing, you know, you're doing it to yourself. Right. So there's kind. Of, let's be very clear here that and I'm not saying, Carolyn, that this is what happened to you, but just a point of information for everybody before we start saying, oh, big companies are bad and little companies are good and they're all getting screwed over. Sometimes little companies just don't follow directions, right? And sometimes big companies don't follow directions too. Whether they do that inadvertently or not, we'll get to. But I think it's very important that we, you know, dot all the I's, cross all the T's, 
make sure that you're always sending your W9, ask them every question in the world, and honestly, like ask them the terms ahead of time too, I think is very important. Because yeah. if you don't know what you're getting into, you think that your contract is fully enforceable by rule of law, might not be, depending on what county, state, country you're in, if you're dealing with an international place, you know, good luck, right? Yeah. If you're dealing with a small amount of money, good luck because it's going to take you a lot of time and effort and energy to drag somebody in small claims. And that only goes up to a certain amount anyway. So there's a lot of time they know that they've got you regardless of whatever contract you think you have. Yeah. So, and contracts, we could probably go on for an hour or more just on contracts, mm -hmm. but really though, look at the terms that the company has and very important. And this is more when you're kind of getting further up there, when you are dealing with the bigger boys and girls, mm -hmm. a lot of these places, if you just ask nicely or look at different programs or whatever, there was a place, um, very large company, um, Fortune 500 type place. And I think their terms were like net 60 or 90 or something like that. And I said, oh, come on, like cut the crap. Like, can't you do better? I, I think I almost said it exactly like that. And they said, you know what? Yeah, actually we can. Uh, as long as you are a small business and the IRS, hey, IRS, if you're listening, peace out, uh, you know, keep doing all the good things. So a small business, according to America, yeah, we, we love you. Mad, pro mad props, IRS. So if you are 100 people or less, you qualify as a small business. And because of this exception slash program that they had, we were able to get net 30 which is amazing, right? Awesome. To do for big companies that you know are gonna pay, they're not going away, and to get paid in a normal time is fantastic. So let's get back to, Carolyn had a couple other points. So yeah. Carolyn works for Tribune, by the way. So at my extremely large company, you have to follow the invoice instructions exactly. Yeah, because I think part of it is they know that people aren't gonna fill out all the instructions right and then they won't have to pay a certain amount yeah. part of it is i mean it's very complicated and mm -hmm. you know places have entire departments people just pay in invoices mm -hmm. so invoices are complicated did you do the work didn't you do the work what do we pay up front what do we pay in the middle what do we pay at the end so the bigger you are the more you have to have all this bureaucracy which you and i might hate and we will talk about that i, I do want to after let's see Oh man, I have so many things to talk about on this and I want to hear everything everybody's saying. Let me just, let me try like one train of thought with some coffee. All right. <laughs> That's two trains of thought. Damn it. All right, fine. Back to one train of thought. Carolyn also says you can dictate or specify terms different from your default terms, but you have to get whomever engaged you to sign off on it and it has to be filed with the accounts payable department. Otherwise our default terms are 90 days, which is insane. I find most major large businesses are 90 days. And I don't understand that. I mean, we're not we're not a bank. We're a small business, and we've got cash flow issues. If we're gonna have to wait three months. Now, let's say it's three months after the work's delivered, right? And let's right. say the, it's a month or two. You, I mean, you're starting to approach close to half a year. Some of the some of the times with some of these places, so it's mm -hmm. pretty wild. But exactly, it's terrible. And we're like to your point, we're small businesses. We're not banks. Right. We are not. We do not have the kind of cash flow that a large company has. Carolyn said when she was a consultant, 90 days made it hard for me to pay my employees. Right, exactly. And, and it's not just paying your employees, it's paying your own damn bills. <laughs> you yep. know? That's your income. Now I'm lucky that I'm, I'm married to someone. My husband um, has a good job and um, wow. you know, he gets a paycheck every two weeks. <laughs> So awesome. we do have cash flow, but if I was single, right? Like Carolyn, I don't know if you were single when you were a consultant, but man, your landlord's not going to be happy or your bank's not going to be happy if you're late paying your, you know, or your mortgage. So, um, well, so let me, let's, let's refocus on how to get paid because you started talking about that a little bit, Brian. Um, yeah. this is, this is what I did. Like after that experience, I'm like, no more. Right. So I cut out net 30 days. Now all invoices are payable upon receipt, which most people do pay like pretty immediately. Um, 
if I had to average it out, I'd say it would be it's more like net seven to 14 days. All right. So Dang. it's okay. It's better than, you know, what it was. Um, people were pushing the envelope. So I do get paid pretty immediately now. And I started um, accepting PayPal as a form of payment because it's so it's easy. You know, it's not much of a transaction cost. I'll, I'll pay that. I'll take that expense, you know, um, mm -hmm. Um, just in order to get paid on time so I don't have to waste my time or my accountants or my bookkeepers time running after people um, sure. but so what I've started doing um, is like you have to set expectations right so it goes back to like you have to have that conversation what Carolyn was saying and what you were saying Brian you have to have that conversation right at the beginning of the engagement before any work gets done all right talk about payment talk about invoicing um, um, you know, what forms of payment you accept, what you don't, blah, 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 blah. Like hammer that all out before you start any work. Um, um, so it needs to, you know, needs to be in your statement of work or your contract or whatever, and everyone signs off on it. Um, so then there's no, then there's no question, you know, moving forward. Um, but if someone's not paying you, be a squeaky wheel, right? I mean, you hear this all the time, be a squeaky wheel. Be a pain in the ass. Um, we'll make this up with a, with exposure. What's John? What's John talking about? Oh yeah, the excuses. Oh yeah. yeah. Screw it's them. like, hey, if you own a car dealership, can I just have that car? And you know, we'll just put a bumper sticker on. It. Yeah, bull crap, guys. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, John's kidding around. Also, I saw Mark Profit had a point there. He said to always hold back work so that you have some leverage to get paid. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll one up you on that, Mark. I like to get paid up front. Because yeah, well, like an attorney too, right? Like if you're working with an attorney, a lot of times they'll, it depends, right? But a lot of times they'll ask you for um, a retainer. You pay, let's say $5,000, they have that. Right. And then they work backwards out of it and they apply or they work into it and they apply the work that they do against that $5,000. And when you're, when you're retained, you know, when they get down to maybe $4,500, they'll be like no more work until you put another $5,000. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And let me also build on some of the stuff that you said before about talking about the types of payment. So I'm not advertising for Starbucks here or whatever, but on my way in this morning, I, I was having a morning and I really needed some coffee before coming into work to get coffee, whatever. You have days like that sometimes. This week's been a little crazy with President's Day and every, you know, we got a lot of international clients and they're like, what's taking so long? It's like we're closed. And they're like, why? It's President's Day, what's that? No, they didn't say what's that, but like, it's just, I don't know. I feel like we're catching up for, trying to catch up for lost time and it's yeah. frustrating. But for anybody that goes to a Starbucks, you like Starbucks, Monica? I'm going I somewhere. Do. I do. We have our own espresso machine, um, which saves us probably thousands of dollars every year. <laughs> no, for real. Yeah. Here's the thing though. Starbucks is a profitable company. Mm -hmm. It's not that old a company and they just sell coffee. What the hell are we even talking? Like, how do these guys make money? Now, so let's walk through this. When, you, when you're not using your fancy espresso machine and you go down the road, mm -hmm. you know, on the way to a client, meeting a client, whatever you're doing, right? There's a Starbucks like on every busy corner yep. where they figure out where to be. So yep. we'll call that marketing, right? They're, they're filling a demand when you need it. So... How do you go to a Starbucks? Do you just go to the same one all the time? Do you use the app? Do you just happen to see it? Uh, um, happen to see it. Well, you know, you generally know where the Starbucks are around you, right? Right. Um, or if you're traveling, you learn real fast because you're not drinking the disgusting coffee that the hotel is supplying. You know um, at least a level of consistency that's pretty good. It may not be the yeah. best coffee in the world, but you know it'll always exactly. be. But there's. There's my little there's my little Starbucks app right there. Oh, and I got mine too. So that's how I pay when I go in. Now we're talking. Okay, so let's talk about that. So you have an app, just like I do, and when you order your fancy drink, so you feel empowered to make decisions about coffee. And don't laugh because that's how they make money, right? 
people are like, oh, my life sucks. Oh, but look, I can make all these really cool decisions. So, you know, you got your little app and yeah, that's how yeah. much balances. Did you ever reload from the app? Yes. Okay. So you already have your credit card. You trust them enough that you have your credit card tied to it. And yeah. instead of like sitting there typing in all this crap or getting out your credit card or getting out cash, you just hit the reload button whenever. And by the way, it reload default is 25 bucks. Does it cost 25 bucks for coffee? Well, almost by them. It's more like two, three, four. Uh, we like Dave Ramsey, the personal finance guy. He likes to call it five bucks because you're not walking out there unless you're spending five bucks. So you're probably spending your five bucks, maybe a little more with treats and snacks and candy and cookies and cakes and breakfast and all that crap. But here's the thing. You hit reload, and instead of getting a $5 ticket, these guys have a $25 ticket, and they know you're going to do it because you're addicted to them, and they have loyalty programs. You have a gold card yet? No, I, no, I don't go enough. Mm -mm. Well, I travel a lot, so I use it a lot. Carolyn does it, right? Carolyn does that. Yeah. And they put crack in the coffee, but you know what? You know what they put in the coffee? Experience. Or they put an ex experience around the coffee. Yeah. And look at that, Carolyn's auto reloads 50 bucks at a time. So they're making how much money off you a year, Carolyn? A ton, right? Wow. These wow. guys are so smart because they have figured out such a low amount of resistance that it is mm -hmm. irresistible. It's so little, it's painless. Okay, so we're in the marketing. Like Monica and I don't spend, you know, you're not spending five bucks with us to get in the door. Obviously you're gonna spend a lot more and in the thousands, whatever, but Here's something I've noticed. I'm going to introduce you guys to somebody. Uh-oh. No, no, not that one. That Monica <laughs> knows. That, 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 not time for that yet. <laughs> I, but we are doing vi visual aids. So this is Mr. Credit Card. It's actually my business debit card. But here's the thing. How easy is it for me if I'm a marketing manager, director, CMO, small business owner, whatever, if I can convince the guy who's holding the purse to just be like, oh, come on, dude, just put it on your corporate card. Mm -hmm. And then I have a magic thing called a payment processor. Now, I do some transactions on PayPal, but PayPal sucks in a sense. Oh, wait, I just said I'm not gonna criticize, I'm sorry. PayPal sucks in a sense. I didn't say it sucks. PayPal is incredible and they pioneered that industry. The yeah. issue though is there's so many phishing emails and not everybody's on PayPal, especially companies. So I'm not, you guys don't actually have to pay anything for this, this is free. But if you take a look, we, I framed in our payment processor into our site. So people just go to nowsourcing.com slash pay I actually have analytics and live chat so I can even see when they're about to pay, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I could like thank them as they're doing it. So easing that resistance is incredible yeah. because yeah. I'd rather get stung by a tiny little percentage and get that money now instead of waiting 90, you know, sometimes it's literally like pay 2% and get the money today up front or 90 days plus and not pay X percent. Yes, and like Carolyn said, when you're when you're feeding your children with promises, right? Right. So, yeah. Monica, you want you chuckled when you thought I was going to get something else. So hang on. Okay. <laughs> Ryan has a really cool prop. Um. <laughs> so we are in Louisville, Kentucky, and this would be a good moment to do like uh, I'm going to do another one of those little tweet animated gift things. So I, Louisville, Kentucky is home of the Louisville Slugger. Mm -hmm. You don't know what Louisville Slugger is. It's a baseball bat company baseball. that makes yeah. mm -hmm. And it's like the iconic, you know, great American pastime, incredible bat company and all the stars do it, blah, blah, blah. So when you go to, it's also a museum and you can see how they make them. So you can mm -hmm. see this is like the mini bat. Mm -hmm. you know, PSA regulations say you can't actually bring this on a plane. Cause I mean, you could bludgeon somebody to death. This is basically a billy club but they give it to kids because, you know, why not? Clearly, you know, kids are not going to beat each other up with it. Why would they do that? But, you know, these are like the little game bats. But I keep I keep this one and the full-size actual bat in my office here. I like to call this one the Net 30. 
And I like to call this one the net 90. Oh my God. I, I need to, wait, what, what does, what does pay me right now look like? Is that pay like? Me right now is a smile on my face. Nope. <laughs> no bat necessary. Okay. Even, I, you can put your name on it and everything. So there you go. That is Here. awesome. I'm going to tweet. I need one. I want to, I want to. <laughs> You got to come out here. We can ship you on. You know, I rode on the uh, chairlift this past weekend with a couple from Louisville, Kentucky. And yeah. I'm like, how the hell did you get all the way up to West Virginia? And I can't remember the story, but. Well, West Virginia is not far from here. It's not. It was a long drive for them, though. I think, like. Well, you basically have to go across the entire state to hit West Virginia, and there's yeah. a bunch of movies and stuff. Yeah. But it's terrible. Yeah. And I forgot to put that in the. There we go. I'm writing a tweet right now saying, do you need a baseball bat to get paid? And I'm linking to this particular stream. Yeah, if you're <laughs> in a Scorsese film, I'd say, yes, you do need a baseball bat to get paid. <laughs> um, so, so, okay, so then, like, what happens when someone's not paying you, right? Like, you put all, like, you've got your baseball bat, <laughs> you, you, you you know, set expectations, you've had these discussions, you know, you've de delivered whatever, you know, the project or work is. Um, so I have, I actually have, um, I have a business attorney. Generally, when someone hears from a lawyer and gets a lawyer letter and a lawyer phone call, they're kind of scared. Not a big company, but like another, you know, smaller business. Um, right. So that, that works wonders, getting an attorney involved. But then me, I am paying for my attorney's time. So you have to like factor that in. Like you, and you know, you can charge, um, you can charge them for, you know, attorney's fees. So you owe me the invoice plus attorney's fees, um, which they'll be paid. Um, and then I have a collections agency. They're actually a client. They're called um, the Kaplan Group. They are in San Luis Obispo, California. Um, they've been around for a long time and they specialize in commercial collections. Nicest people. They're so easy to work with. But um, Dean, who's the owner, told me that if, um, if you don't, if, typically if you don't get paid within 30 days or, you know, whatever the net terms are, like, let's say, you know, you're, they're not going to pay you for 90 days. If it goes beyond that, generally, you're not going to get paid. Um, but of course, you know, hearing from a collections agency, again, that's still a little scary, you know, to hear from a collections agency. Um, and they're squeaky wheels, right? Because they're gonna, they're gonna do the squeaky wheel for you. Um, and honestly, it's, I'd rather get some of the money because obviously a collections agency, right, is taking some of the money. I'd rather right. get most of the money rather than none of it. I agree. You Monica, you to, please link to them because I think that most small businesses think they're too expensive or I don't know how to do this. I feel like. I don't remember what they're looking up. Yeah. And, you know, if you don't have it right away, that, that's fine too. Hey, Stefan, thank you so much for joining. And Danielle, thanks for coming on in. Who else did I not greet? I think a couple people came and went. <laughs> so yeah, I think that basically, look, nobody at the beginning is good at this, right? Right. Like, when I talk about this because we got screwed at some point and we were tired of doing it. Yeah. So over time, you just figure things out. I got to tell you a real funny one while you're looking for the link. I, got I remember it. this guy back before we were an infographic agency and we were a social media agency. There was a guy who changed, he wanted me to change the terms on his contract where we're doing some social media marketing or something. Who even remembers at this point? This was years ago. Yeah. And he wanted it to say half up front and half upon satisfactory delivery. I'm like, yeah, whatever. You know, I need the money. Come on, ready. Let's go. And we did the work and we did really good. And when it came time to pay the second half, he's like, oh, well, I'm not satisfied. I'm like, wow, well, you're horrible. I still know who this is, but you know what? I'm not going to call him out. Wow. I do want to make a point here because you gave everybody the finger a minute ago, but really you were just talking about the, the place that you did before. I think it's important not to burn bridges. Even yeah. if you're super mad and they owe you a ton of money, there was a place uh, at the end of this past year that owed us a lot. And I was mad. 
I was yelling at them, pretty sure I cursed at them a couple of times. And I think maintaining a good relationship with your points of contact is key yeah. because we got everything we wanted. We collected late fees on it. We were very sorry. They changed the payment structure for us. So sometimes if you can just wait it out, be patient, be professional because people are not used to people being professional at the end of the day on the other side, on either side, right? Yeah. If you can maintain your cool and your calm. Sometimes you can walk away with an incredible deal with better terms and then they just respect you because I think sometimes big companies are just like, ah, F you buddy. Like you're just some little idiot in Kentucky. You know, who cares? Like screw yeah, you. Well, karma's a bitch. You know what? If that's how you're treating people, that's coming back around. It yeah, that's true. But hold on. But my point though is if I stand up for myself and it's like, no, no, you know what? You called me, you need me because I'm in high demand and I've got a line of people wanting to do business with us because we're the hot thing. You're falling out of favor. I don't care how big you are. The Fortune 500 goes up and down. You know, every 10 years, people fall right on and off that list. So I don't care if you've been around 100 years. I don't care if you make $100 billion because you could be out of business in a couple of years. And I'm not because I believe in doing business properly and respecting people. And if you're going to just keep doing it like that, eventually you're not going to get your best work. But again, it, the onus on, is on us to be professional, to do the work. We're just talking about getting paid. I mean, you know, they're still doing the work. I know there's a, a question before where it's like holding back work. That's a, oh. a, a thing too. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And that's, that's, I've instituted that, you know, for big projects that are over X, X amount, um, you it's pay half up front, half right. the rest of it before the final project is delivered. Because right. as long as you're still in possession of it, it does not belong to anyone else, it belongs to your company. Um, so, well, you know what, and so it's interesting, like with the one company that owed, owed me $12,000 for a really long time, yeah. finally paid most of it, um, <laughs> paid most of it because I was about to um, to pull out the, uh, the, the nuclear option. What's the nuclear option? The nuclear. I was lucky. I had leverage. <laughs> um, uh, so, so this this project. Okay, so this the company that that owed me money. We'll just call them Company A. Company okay. A hired me, and this was the third project I'd work on. I'd worked on with them. They'd always paid all their other, you know, um, invoices on time. Never been an issue. Um, they were great to work with. I enjoyed the projects, but big projects. Um, so, so they pulled me in and I wrote half of a huge website for an, an association, you know, here in the DC area, you know, you can't throw a rock without hitting three associations. Right. I know it. <laughs> so it was a really big association. It was a huge project. So I wrote half of the website content. Right. Well, guess what? Because I'd never been paid for it. That website content was up in violation of copyright laws. <laughs> that it still belonged to me. So the Maybe. nuclear option, the nuclear option was uh, to call the client, the association be like, you got to take down half of your website. <laughs> that would have gone over well. Oh yeah. Never screw with people on the internet, folks. If we have the keys to your internets, um, we can turn it off or put funny pictures or redirect it to porn sites. Not that anybody would ever do that. Because again, we're trying to be straight up here. We're trying to be professional. Yes. If we wear glasses and suits and crap, you know, come on. Yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to get a bad reputation. Yeah. But yeah, we, absolutely. And you don't. You do not want to burn bridges. You know, um, that's that's the biggest mistake you'll ever make because you don't know. Like, you know, it, it's it's probably not your point of contact at the company that's not paying you. It's absolutely. someone back right. there. You know, on the uh, on the other floor or on the other side of the building, who's holding it up? It's 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 the accounts payable people. It's the finance departments, whoever accounting department. You don't want to lose that relationship with your point of contact. What happens when they go to this company over here? You want them to bring you. You know, you want them to remember you and bring you along with them. Um, and yeah, it's just there's. You know, it's fine to be angry and, 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 you know, get that out, but that's so much negative energy. You can't hold on to it and you can't, you can't just blast it out 
like a fire hose. It doesn't do anyone any good. Very true. And and you know what you were talking about at the beginning, Brian, is is how this, you know, this series is all about the crappy parts of being an entrepreneur and, and how hard it is and all the back end stuff. This is the worst part for me of the back end is all the finance related stuff, all the accounting related stuff. It's not fun and it's hard. And it's why we love the IRS <laughs> because we don't want them to come after us. And, and, and you get audited and it's horrible, but you got to keep all your ducks in a row. And that's, that's everything, everything money related with a small business. So not sexy, so not fun, but it's got to be done. I actually find it fun. <laughs> oh my God, no. That's why I have an accountant and a bookkeeper and I love them and they know I love them. And my I, accountant treats no. me like a wayward daughter. She loves me. She's very yeah. kind to me, but she's very firm. And she knows, like, I have no idea at all. Like, I don't absorb this. I don't absorb anything she tells me. Right. So I don't. let me just back up a second there just to clarify my position. I hate accounting. I could not be an accountant. Uh, Myers-Briggs, I'm the ENTP visionary Walt Disney guy. I do not want to sit there looking at Excel all day. I've been a business analyst and stuff, but I hate it. I, I'm good at it, but I hate it. You can't last being good at something that you don't really like. So I don't like accounting. I don't like bookkeeping. I did some of it in the early days. I hate it. So my bookkeeper does that. My accountant does this. I'm happy about it. I like to argue with companies about money and getting paid because I enjoy sales and I'm trying to help them make it better, right? Because if I don't stand up, they're going to screw me and a thousand other companies after me. So I actually think that it's a good thing that I'm doing. I think that if I have an opportunity to increase my position and show them that I'm worth respecting. So I actually ask a lot of clients for feedback. And one of the things that they like about us is how professional they are. Because you were talking earlier, Monica, about creative agencies. You couldn't believe that they screwed you on that. You know what? Creative agencies often suck at business. They don't know how to treat vendors. They don't know how to treat partners. They don't know how to pay people. So I'm not surprised, right? And I don't want that kind of reputation because it, I think the industry in and of itself has a bad rap. So these companies are just used to screwing us, whether you make infographics, whether you do copywriting, whether you do SEO, if you're anything in like that digital marketing space, then it's like, whatever, like it's just some old crap place and we don't have to treat them good. But if you stand up for yourself, then you're gonna win. And if you don't, you still win by never working for them again. So, you know, maybe you know. Yeah, I had another client this past fall who refused to pay me for work delivered, and it wasn't much, so I didn't, you know, sick my attorney on them or send it to collections. Right. But um, but I I did send them an email saying, well, obviously, you know, I'm sorry you did not see the value in the work we provided. Um, I I the the letter was very professional. But it was it was basically like a screw you letter. Like you're rude, you're mean, you're horrible, you know. Huh. And I'm never working with you again. But said in a much much gentler way. Right. Um, Pretty crazy. Sorry. Text yeah. reminder. Oh no, um, you're good. We are going a little over time, but I, I just want to add a little bit. So I think because we not just talking, you know, we're not just airing out that we're mad about stuff. We also want to give people some practical tips. I cannot emphasize enough. But I said before, when you think about Starbucks, when you think how slick their app is, you know where it is, you know where to go, you know how to get transaction list and reloading. That's why Uber is super successful. You can love them, hate them, I don't care. Yeah. They're better when it comes to the payment side of it. You yeah. draw my payment form. The more you get away from people that will send you checks eventually, I mean, I remember there was a guy who sent us a check with the wrong amount on purpose. And I'm like, well, he's like, oh, I'm going to FedEx it. I'm like, good. What's the tracking number? And he like gave me like a number. Like it was just ridiculous. And I later found that like they had a reputation. For doing this yeah. 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 People play games. So the more you give them the opportunity to play games with you, they're either going to do it out of incompetence, fight, 
or just because they think they can because they did. So whenever, whenever you can, get that credit card. People don't like it if you have like a terminal and you keep the number, they don't trust that. Get whatever company you're using, get a payment form. So you're not so you're PCI compliant, whatever they want, and just do that. Yeah, it, make it seamless, right? Make no friction, no friction at all. And if they don't want to do that, you know, inside the United States, there's ACH, which is like an internal wire, and then yeah. over you do an, a, a wire like that. Or if they like PayPal, uh, or there's a number of other companies like Skrill and Money Bookers and all that kind of stuff. Try to do electronic payment whenever, whenever you can, because you will get paid much faster and people yeah. like it better. There's actually, just from a, a consumer standpoint, people spend, I think it's like 20% more money just using a credit or debit card as opposed to cash. Because, you know, if I reach into my wallet, which has like no money in it, <laughs> a dollar, great. So if I reach into my wallet, I don't want to get rid of my dollar because it's my last dollar. I can whip out this, this debit card like it's nothing, right? Yeah, yeah. Because Feel it. Companies are like that too, especially the people that are pushing the approve and deny button that don't know the good work that you're doing. They don't interface with you at all, right? right? So a lot of times they or senior management are the ones that are standing between you and being able to feed your family or yourself or whoever, you, you know, you don't want to die. You don't want everybody that's counting on you to be like that. Yeah, no, it's yeah. stressful and there's no reason for it. There isn't. Absolutely. So, yeah. Outstanding. So let's see. I just wanted to catch up here, see if we missed any other questions. I don't think so. Carolyn had a, a number of points here. Sorry, Carolyn. Let's catch you up. So she said for her consulting, she sells bundles of hours in advance. Oh, yeah. Against the time right, block. So that's like the retainer oh. model that attorneys use. Yep. That's a good one. Uh, let's see. So, Monica, I'm not sure how much more time you have. I have a call at 11.30 with my team. Cool. Let's see. So we have a few more minutes if anybody wants to ask any questions. Hey there, Andrew. If anybody has yeah, any definitely. questions. Or just any questions. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't have to be about getting paid or payment terms or anything, but just being a small business owner. Um, I actually had a, a friend of mine, um, single mom, awesome. Mm -hmm. um, her kids are so amazing they are so well behaved they are so well behaved we love having them over um but she she's a, a cpa uh, she does uh tax uh, uh corporate corporate tax work and she she quit her job last winter because her boss was so bad like the owner of the company um the owner of the company begged her to stay and she said i can't i can't work for this person anymore so she this is you know the sole income for, for, for her family was this job. She quit and walked away. So she asked me about, you know, starting her own business. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but like you need income now. You don't need income in a year or two right. years. Right. You know, it, it takes a long time to build your business. So for two years, when I got started, I went to tons of networking events. I mean, I wasn't going to a networking event every day, but I was out there a lot, meeting as many people as I could to build my business. Yeah. That's what you have to do. It's hard. Yeah, you, know? you kill yourself out there. In the early days of now sourcing, I mean, before I started this business, I was a CTO for a place out on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. I left that. Um, I didn't really like some of the things going on with the company, some of the stuff with leadership. I said to them, hey, you know, like, I really want to just go out on my own. I want to set my schedule. I think I have what it takes. And I want you to be my client. And they said yes. And that kind of springboarded into other things that I did. But later on in the early days, when I was just, when it was just me in my basement, right? I, even though I was fully trained in tech and all this and marketing and stuff, I would do like tech support stuff. You know, like the tech support people that do house calls, like I was doing that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't give a damn because that's making bank, that's supporting your family, that's supporting yourself. 
that like you're too good to go do work or something. I never understand that whole model with some of these entrepreneurs. It's like, no, I can only do it if it looks good on Instagram. It's like, you know what? Instagram doesn't pay the bills unless you're like verified with 5 million people or something. Don't even right. get me started, bro. Right? A high, five, a high five, a thumbs yeah. up, a like does not pay the bills. Right. Yeah. You know, it's not <laughs> share for share or whatever. No, none of that crap's going to matter. Yeah. And you know what? It helped me continue to get good at sales. It helped me learn the neighborhoods. It helped mm -hmm. me, you know, because I could also tell people, it's like, hey, by the way, I'm also starting this business and I do this and that. Right. And right. we continued a few relationships that mushroomed into more work on the now. That's side. very common, right? You do something else while you're building your business. Um, and you start your business on the side and let it grow organically so you can quit your day job and do what you actually love, you know. I have a great book to recommend, which I will drop a note in the comments. There is a wonderful author by the name of John Acuff, and he has a book called Quitter. Not Twitter, that's with a T. This is with a Q-U. So let's see, is this it? I think this is it. In short, TLDR version, don't quit your day job, people. You might not be good at anything. There's a big difference between being a subject matter expert where everybody is, you know, they you have a department of people with baseball bats to make sure that you get paid. But guess what, kids? When you leave that the womb, the comfort zone of that company, you might not like your boss or whatever, but good luck getting paid. If you don't have those skills, Mm -hmm. They don't care how nice you are, how much you smile, or how well your copywriting is, or whatever. You have to be good at getting paid. There's some natural, innate skill to it, but this is a learned skill. You have to be incredibly good at soft skills, being firm, kind of being lawyerly, or at least have like a whole dream team of lawyers and collection people and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. If you don't want to do it yourself. But, I yeah. guess. but if you but if you do the work up front, you know, where you set the expectations, you agree on the terms and you don't have to bother with any of that, then it, it's, it's a moot point. You know, it's not relevant to your to your situation. Right. But I, I heard an, I, someone told a story. I read it somewhere yeah. um, about this one woman entrepreneur. She'd been around a long time, had a great clients. Um, um, but wasn't like her cash flow was horrible. You know why? She wasn't even sending out invoices. Like, I fell out of my chair when I heard this. Like, she was she was so nice. She didn't want to bill people for all of the. I'm like, what? Uh, my, head, my head just exploded. Please, just no. Yeah, yeah. That was my problem, John. What did you do? Are you giving away work for free? Um, I don't understand that. We're not what? here to be nice. We're here to deliver a service. And you pay me down. Oh, you freelance designer. Well, that's true, Monica. Yeah, John's actually our creative director. And mm -hmm. John used to freelance years ago. But, you know, it's such an emotional thing, right? I'm, I'm sure you got better. <laughs> on both sides of the fence, though, right? So yeah. I've heard people say, why should we pay you up front? What's your incentive for continuing? It's like... I don't know. Maybe the fact that like we're a world class organization, what we do, we've been around ten and a half years, and why are you even saying this? Like, right. You, yeah, it's, it's not a Bernie Madoff thing where we take your money and but then. It's, but it's an important yeah. point because companies think in the back of their mind, however smooth and slick you might sound, and all these case studies and all this work that you've done, they have in the back of their mind, I need to hold on to my money as long as I can because I might get screwed, and that's that's the reality. So you have to you have to come up against this human emotion and drama, guys and gals. Yeah, this there's so much, there's so many emotions tied to money. People don't like to talk about it. You know, it's ta it's really taboo to talk about it. I'll really? talk about it. I tell people how much I make. I mean, not in every conversation, but if yeah. it comes up, I tell people. You know, especially if they're other small business owners, and I'll be like, "This is how much I made last year." Right. All right, but it got me. Oh God, all this stuff is popping up. It got me, um, it got me, um, you know, it took a few years to get here. You know, this didn't, it's not like I hung out my shingle and then 
boom, my bank account was full of money. <laughs> you, know? you didn't get that one either? Damn it. I was hoping you were the one that got it. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm uh, still looking for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're, you know, back to my point. The point is, we're yeah. scared of money. We're scared to talk about money. We're scared to look at it. We're scared to touch it. We're scared to 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 put together a budget, you know, whether at home or at work. It's it's crazy. Yep. You're exactly right. People do not budget and they're just hoping that the uncomfortable stuff will go away and then mommy and daddy will make the decisions for us. Right. Good luck. Mommy. Yeah. For real. Hey, so before we go, yep. let me open the floor. Um, I see John's still out there. Carolyn's still out there. I'm wondering if anybody wants to call in just for a, a minute or two. Just I know Monica and I both have uh, 1130s, but hey, you know, since we've been going this long and we've been talking, maybe some of you might have something to say. So if somebody has something that's on point to what we're talking about, if you'd like to come on air for just a minute or two, now's your time. If you're too shy or you're afraid you, your hair doesn't look good today, that's fine too. You can just write comments on the side. If not, I'm not going to talk forever. This is called being firm, right? <laughs> you can define boundaries and not sound like a dick. How'd I do? You sounded good. You <laughs> define boundaries. And that's, yeah. you know, boundaries, boundaries. That's a whole, that boundaries is a whole nother blab. I just called it. Carolyn says she's working from home, no makeup and pajamas. Oh, well, there we, go. we won't judge, but I understand. That's fine. But you know, I work from home, obviously. You know, you can see part of my living room behind me. I'm sitting at my dining room table, but I have to, you know, I get up, I, I work out, I take a shower, I get dressed, I put on makeup. Like I can't, I can't just like work in my pajamas. And one of my, my sister-in-law does. She'll just sit in bed all day in her pajamas working. She's married with a kid, you know? And I'm like, ah, I need to be like, like, you know, going through the whole routine. Like I'm like mentally prepared to work. Correct. Yeah. You know? it's, it's so important about that. Yeah. Okay, Carolyn. Everybody loves to work for bed. I, I, I'm not saying that that isn't a valid thing, but if you only work from home and you never have a separation, like if you don't literally go into another room or get dressed or shower or go to the coffee shop, work out, see people, go to clients, whatever, you kind of lose your mind, right? Hermit. Uh, John used to do that too. I'd get up and put on a suit and walk to my garage to work when I was working from home. Oh, see, exactly. John and I in the earlier days had some really interesting um, work setups uh, I'll have to get some pictures of this. So my wife and I started the business and we had, you know, those storage sheds. Yeah. Right. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, really? Because like, it was not like a super big house and we have a bunch of kids and I didn't want to cannibalize a room that would be a bedroom or whatever, or the living room, and dining room. So we literally got like one of those storage sheds and we finished it. So like we wired it up for power and internet and like, we had like a an air conditioner unit in the window and it had like windows all around and you could yeah. fit a couple people. But I mean, like I wasn't going to grow the business from there. Right. So we used to call it sweet 100, <laughs> but it, like, it wasn't like literally sweet 100. I'll give you guys tips for the But it's funny. I remember like there was this one time I like, I was given a, like a webinar and the dude next door was like mowing the lawn. I had to wait a minute. It was ridiculous. So, <laughs> Yeah, listen, I've been the, the at-home warrior too, and it takes a special kind of person to stay focused on that. Whatever you want to wear, whatever you want to dress like. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I, do, I mean, I do, I do a lot of household stuff, you know, during the day, but that's my break. I eat right. through lunch, you know, yeah. I go over here to the kitchen, make my lunch, but I bring it right back down here and I eat through lunch. So I'll, you know, do laundry and pick up and crap like that. Um which is really nice, but that's my break. I mean, I don't really take a break. I work, you know, nine hours straight, really, every day. Oh, only nine? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not, I'm not trying to grow like a Fortune 50 company here. You know, it's, it's, I, I'm growing my business. I want to, but it's also a lifestyle. You know, like I took off the past two Mondays to snowboard. And tomorrow I'm flying to San Diego for a long weekend with my husband because he's there for work at the, you know, like now. Um, so that I can, 
you know, like it's, I'm not ever going to make a million dollars, but that's okay. You know, it's, it's a lifestyle and it works for me. I need the balance. I hear you. So I, arguably that would be the definition of more of a cottage industry kind of a business where you're not looking to scale up a huge team and all that. You know, right. your talent, you know, your limits, you know, how I many know my limits. Right. That's it. I know my limits. And you know, at the end of the day, right? There's 24 hours in a day. If you want to bend physics, the only way to make that happen is to hire more people and to hire more people, you better start charging a hell of a lot more money and get them figured out. And mm -hmm. I'm telling you guys, it's a battle. It's very difficult, right? To have yeah. enormous amounts of money you have to pay every other week for payroll and office space. It's yeah, a beat. Exactly. Yeah. All that overhead costs, yeah. The struggle yeah. is real. The struggle is real, Carolyn. And Monica just said something very important too. So Monica's a spouse that she cares about and doesn't like throw under the bus here and you're taking a long weekend and that that's fantastic. My wife and I um, have been running this from the start. Uh, she does some of the big picture stuff. I do like more of the day-to-day -day operations of it. We actually just had a piece, I'll, I'll link to it here, that we were featured in Inc. Magazine about running a business and staying happily married. Because if you think it's hard to just run a business, try doing both. Oof. Oh, no. Tough. No, I would never be able to work with my husband. I would kill him. Or he, he would probably kill me. Yeah, I mean, some days I think you just try to kill each other. Um, but I've, I've heard a, a great definition of being married. It's basically you text each other grocery lists until one of you dies. <laughs> Well, that aside, I think the way that we make it work is that we just focus on different parts of it. Because if we're just going to be in each other's face about it day and night, it's like, no. And I, I love Judy. Judy's incredible. I don't think we ever would have even been where we are without her. And she named the business. She gives a lot of great creative input. And she really completes all the stuff that kind of I have in my head that I don't know how to, to put out there. So... You ran, Carolyn says she ran a business with her first husband. No. Who shot me and now on my third husband. Oh my God. <laughs> How'd you get rid of the second one? Did you run a business with him too? <laughs> what, was he net 30 or? No, I'm just, yeah. Incredible. Wow. I, I just, I have no words, Carolyn. I'm so sorry you did not on air. He was with unemployed. That. that was amazing. Yeah. That, I, that's I, I, actually a really good discussion. Like, like, how do you handle being a breadwinner? And it doesn't matter whether you're the husband or wife or, you know, if, if you're just in a long-term relationship with someone and you're not even married and one person's not working and one person is, that's, that's tough. Right. I mean, a lot, a lot, so many issues arising, you know? And then what happens when the breadwinner loses their job? Then there's no income. So you have really good friends right now um, the husband is a sea um, um, uh, level, let's leave it at that, and yep. has been out of work for over a year. And they're trying to make the best of it, but I'm like, you know, she's a stay-at-home mom. She's starting a business, but it's right. gonna, you know, they have no income. That, um, yeah. <laughs> Not having income sucks. Yeah. So you can feel your feelings and you can talk about your dreams and hopes and all that. But one of you better go out there and deliver pizzas or sell blood or plasma or whatever else comes out of your body, or I'm coming after you with this bat. No, screw that bat. I'm coming after you. The big one. Get out the big one. No, screw you, deadbeats. You're, you're not, I'm just going to leave that here up on my shoulder just as extra intimidate. I really, this is not a show about violence. This is a show about peace and sometimes baseball bats. <laughs> Seriously, guys, like you. <laughs> As a hardworking entrepreneur, I can't even, un I cannot even, that's it, I I'm done. I'm like, forget it. Like, I, let's leave, let's, let's leave the show on a happy note. So wow. if all you guys don't have any more questions, oh, wait, <laughs> that usually happens, right? Because we're about to go. Exactly. Else. I, I used to do Periscope. I stopped doing Periscope, but I do a Periscope broadcast every Thursday at 1 p.m. And I stopped doing it because. <laughs> you just keep coming in, right? People are coming in while I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'll see you guys next week. And oh, sorry, you're just coming in now. Bye. Right. <laughs> I felt bad. 
And but okay. hey, it's recorded. So people who just joined, who just joined, um, Shyam, they can watch yeah. it. Yeah, so you can watch it. So okay, Shyam, welcome and goodbye. <laughs> it was welcome great. Bye. <laughs> it's been such a pleasure. Thank you Absolutely. so much for spending the time today walking us through all of your wisdom that you've learned along the way. And hey, can you, there is that, you had a great piece in Freelancers Union about this as well, right? Um, yeah, it's the same article. Yeah. Oh, is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, if I can find that real quick, I will drop this in here. And if nobody has any other, oh, I found it already. If anybody has any other questions, now's the time. If not, you can watch us on the recordings. Woohoo! Where we All will right. live in perpetuity. There it is. Yep, okay. There it is. Well, this has been Brian Wallace with the Weekly Wisdom Blab live stream here with Monica. Thank you so much for your time today. Have a great guys. Great. Have a great guys. More coffee needed. Have a wonderful day, guys. Don't settle for net 90. Don't settle for net 60, 45, maybe 30. But go get that dollar. Awesome. Bye. See ya.